Ischemic heart disease, also known as a silent killer, managed to take lives of millions in just a year's time. Without proper education and information, the prevalence of this disease will continue to rise, claiming more lives each year. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Minor Talk, specializing on IHD, ischemic heart disease. And I, Sheng Yu, will be your host for today. To kickstart this talk, let's invite our highly anticipated, knowledgeable, and respectable cardiologist, Dr. Li Bun Chai, former Deputy Minister of Health and currently a practicing cardiologist. In this episode, Dr. Li will be telling us more about ischemic heart disease from its diagnosis to its treatments. So, Dr. Li, would you like to further introduce yourself and start today's topic? Uh, thank you, Shen Yu. Uh, as you have said, I'm uh, still a practicing cardiologist. So, um, ischemic heart disease is very close to my heart. What Shin Yu has said earlier, I think ischemic heart disease is one of the major killers uh, in the world. I think the world every year, there are about 8 million deaths as a result of ischemic heart disease. If you look at the heart, uh, let me go through quickly about um, some pathology of uh, ischemic heart disease and diagnosis and uh, treatment. So if you look at uh, cardiovascular circulation, I think the heart is the main pumping chamber body, and it pumps the blood uh, to the whole body, to the arteries, to the brain, to the limbs, to the abdominal organs, and to the lower limbs. If you look at the interior of the heart, uh, there are four chambers, four, two chambers on the right and two chambers on the left. Two chambers on the right receive deoxygenated blood from the whole body and get oxygenated in the lungs and come back to the left side of the heart. Most important, the left ventricle is the main pumping chamber of the heart, which pumps the blood to the rest of the body. And basically, because the systemic, what we call the rest of the body, is a high pressure circulation. So the pump needs to work very hard. Uh, as to the right ventricle, because the pressure in the pulmonary artery are much lower compared to the aorta. So the right ventricle doesn't working as hard as the left ventricle. So most of the time when you refer to a heart attack, we refer to mainly circulation to the left ventricle. But occasionally, heart attack can occur also affecting the right ventricle. Of course, uh, the heart also needs blood supply, needs oxygen and energy, and all the blood supply is also uh, supplied by these coronary arteries, the right coronary artery, and on the left, left coronary arteries. Common term, we talk about three arteries of the heart, circumflex, left anterior descending, and the right coronary arteries. And uh, ischemic heart disease is a situation where the blood flow to the heart is affected. If you look at the lumen of the heart, this is at birth, the lumen of the heart, which is totally clean. And over the years, the atherosclerotic plaque accumulates. Uh, these are rich in cholesterol and some fibrous plaque accumulates over the years. And atherosclerosis is a very slow process and may take 30, 40, 50 years. And it started with fatty streak and slowly it developed over the years. And for some patients, this fatty streak can occur as young as 20 years old. But cholesterol deposit accumulates together with the fibrous plug over the years. And the process can be accelerated by various factors, especially smoking, diabetes, hypertension, and uh, high cholesterol or hyperlipidemia. And these are known factors which contribute to ischemic heart disease. Of course, there are other factors which also contribute to ischemic heart disease, but they are not modifiable factors, including like aging, see that uh, as you age, more likely to have atherosclerotic plaque accumulating over the years. 
And also, ischemic heart disease is more common among men. And certain population has got intrinsic genetic defect, which makes them more likely to get ischemic heart disease. When the plaque accumulates, it can do two things. One, if it accumulates slowly, the blood flow to the heart is insufficient, and it may be sufficient at rest, but it is insufficient during exercise. That's what we normally call critical angina. But that's when the blood flow to the heart is insufficient because of narrowing of the coronary arteries. But more deadly is acute myocardial infarction or heart attack. And heart attack is a sudden event, it's a sudden catastrophic event. And normally it occurs in a pre assisting plug due to some factors. When there's a rupture on the surface of the plug, clot will form and the blood clot will occlude the arteries. So if you understand the mechanism, you will know that usually in the setting of acute marker infarction, when, take for example, when this artery is blocked, this part of the muscle would not have sufficient blood flow and there will be dead muscle as a result of the myocardial infarction. So there are three mechanisms. One is rupture of the blood and then, uh, and then blood clot formation and subsequent impede, uh, insufficient blood flow. So these are three steps. And you can see that in the treatment of acute myocardial infarction, uh, medicine which are used, including clot busters, medicine which can dissolve the clot, such as streptokinase or RTPA, or we also give antiplatelet agent, which actually work by inhibiting uh, clot formation. But however, we also know that there is fixed stenosis at the artery. So lots of the time, it is angioplasty and putting a stent for this setting of acute marker infarction. And we know that uh, at current knowledge in the presence of acute marker infarction, uh, if it is seen early, the treatment of choice is primary angioplasty. So if you suspect you have coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease, uh, there are a few tests which can be done. One is ECG. Look at uh, ECG at rest and see whether there is any evidence of myocardial ischemia. And sometimes the resting ECG can be normal. So we subject the patient to a stress test, meaning that we put them onto a treadmill or bicycle and stress them and look at the blood flow. And the ECG can show if there is insufficient blood flow to the heart. And that's where you can pick up uh, early uh, coronary artery disease. Of course, we wouldn't do this in a setting of so-called acute marker infarction. It can be dangerous. So in the setting of acute marker infarction, the ECG have shown, and there is no need to do a treatment. Other than this, there are further tests which can be done. Uh, one of the new tests which can be done is a CT scan, a CT angiogram. Actually, it is the usual CT scan together with some software program which can look at the coronary artery indirectly. And this is a picture of a CT angiogram which can outline the coronary arteries uh, through computer reconstruction of the images. And in some of the picture, you can also see like this, there is a coronary stent before. This is a patient who had been stent, stented before. And or you can see a lot of calcification in the coronary arteries. So these are CT angiogram. But for uh, and uh, in this case, a CT angiogram shows a severe uh, stenosis in this area. And CT angiogram doesn't need to put catheter inside the body. It just inject dye to the vein, and it is non-invasive, and it can give. Uh, indirect information. To confirm, we need to do 
coronary angiogram, meaning that putting the catheter at the coronary artery, in this case, the right coronary arteries and, and inject contrast uh, into the artery and take the picture. And you can see that the right coronary artery, there is some narrowing at the proximal third of the right coronary artery. So that's how coronary angiogram is done. So once you have uh, diagnosed to have ischemic heart disease, uh, the, the most important thing when we talk about management is we must go back to the objectives of treatment. Okay? Basically, for all illnesses, whether you treat cancer, you treat ischemic heart disease, you treat many other diseases, stroke, whatever, you only have two objectives. You either hope that, hope that your treatment will allow the patient to live longer or live better. So for ischemic heart disease, there are basically three options. One is Maxon, two angioplasty and stenting, three bypass surgery. But on top of all the three options, there are other measures which are equally important. These are so-called risk factor modifications especially lifestyle intervention, because we know that certain lifestyle and certain factors, if untreated, they contribute to accelerated atherosclerosis and they contribute to recurrence and worsening of the ischemic heart disease. Uh, these factors like smoking. If you continue to smoke, you are more likely to get heart attack and your angina will likely to get worse because uh, smoking contains not just agents which cause exospasm and cause blood flow to the heart to be uh, restricted. So stopping smoking is essential. And the other factors is, of course, you need to treat the cholesterol if it is elevated. Uh, even if it is not elevated, uh, most patients will still benefit from a specific class of cholesterol maximum cause statins. And other than that, diabetes and hypertension has to be well controlled. And we normally will encourage patients to do regular exercise uh, if possible, unless there are contraindications to exercise. So, uh, and if they are obese, they should be encouraged to uh, lose weight. So that uh, because obesity also contributes to worsening of the ischemic heart disease. So all these other measures about risk factor modifications are important. And other than the Maxon. And the Maxon, basically, the most important thing is antiplatelet agent, because we know that myocardial infarction started with blood rupture, although followed by uh, platelet aggregation and clot formation. So the use of antiplatelet agent actually prevents heart attack, and it is important. So the commonest agent being used is aspirin. Uh, there are other antiplatelet agents, such as clopidogrel, uh, and the other treatment will depend on the situation. If the patient had angina, then they probably need a nitrate or a GTN uh, under the tongue, and when necessary. On top of that, they may need a beta blocker, a trimetazidine, or other anti angina medication. So these are on Maxon. Uh, apart from that, we can also consider angioplasty and uh, stenting. I think most of the time, if the coronary ischemic heart disease involves small arteries, most likely they will be left alone. If, if the stenosis is not serious, most of the time medication will be sufficient. But if the arteries are, the arteries involved are big arteries and stenosis is severe, then they might need to be opened up. Uh, this is what happened in balloon angioplasty and stenting. So if you have a stenosis at this area, we can trade in a catheter with a balloon on top of the balloon, there is a stand, and balloon is inflated. The stand is expanded, and then balloon is removed, 
and the stand is put in place. And this will support the artery so that to keep the, keep the artery open. On top of that, all the stents used now are coated with drugs which can prevent a restenosis of the artery. So balloon angioplasty carries a 1% risk of heart attack during the angioplasty and 5% risk of recurrence, which may require repeat uh, angioplasty. So other than that, uh, if there are many arteries which are affected, say three vessel coronary artery disease or left main coronary artery disease, then most of the time we recommend a coronary artery bypass surgery, which is a major surgery done under coronary artery by, uh, under bypass, meaning that the heart is put to stop, the circulation is maintained by a bypass machine during the operation. So basically you can see that this is like uh, using the leg vein or the artery off from the hand, uh, from the arm, connect from the aorta to the uh, distal artery. Or you can take the internal memory artery of the left side and connect directly to the left anterior descending artery. So coronary artery bypass, uh, the risk of uh, recurrent uh, is extremely low. And this artery don't normally get blocked. Whereas the other graph may get blocked between five, 10 years, but this artery usually will stay uh, 20, 30 years or even uh, longer. So I think when there are many arteries which are affected, the preferred treatment will be coronary artery bypass. You may hear about other treatment like chelating treatment. Uh, there are people who inject chelating agent which claim to remove the plug. Um, I must say that that treatment is not proven. So it's still experimenting for many, many years and uh, didn't show any uh, definitive success. I think that uh, briefly uh, go through pathogenesis of skin heart disease, diagnosis and treatment. With that, thank you. All right, uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. All right, so uh, I will move into the Q&A session and ask a few questions before we end. All right, so uh, I heard that doctors say that uh, usually people uh, during like as early as 20 years old, they can actually get fatty streaks, right? So I actually did some research before this interview and I actually heard that uh, people are getting younger and younger, that younger, the younger generation is actually getting ischemic heart disease and they are more susceptible to it right now than last time. So is there any uh, explanation to this trend? I think if you look at uh, the epidemiology, uh, diabetes is getting more common, definitely because of the lifestyle changes. So diabetes is certainly a risk factor. I think you just look at Malaysia, I think years ago, uh, our diabetes population among adults is probably about 7 to 8%. But if you do the population study now from US and from other universities, I think it's gone, gone to about 16, 17% among adults. So diabetes is certainly a factor. I think smoking is certainly another factor. Uh, I'm not sure whether the ischemic heart disease is getting younger or not, but certainly we are doing more tests. We are picking up uh, patients uh, earlier because there are extensive uh, investigation available, whereas in the old days, a lot of patients actually presented with fluke marker infarction. We do pick up patients who are otherwise asymptomatic during routine uh, screening, or patients who had uh, just some atypical uh, angina pain, and because of the modality of investigations which are available now. So I think we are picking we are probably picking up earlier, earlier compared to before. Uh, so I think I can say that because uh, as I described as uh, ischemic heart disease is a silent killer. So last time we don't have like so many treatments and so many like diagnoses. So we cannot actually pick up on those uh, people who actually have ischemic heart disease. But right now we are more like 
uh, how say like more advanced so you can find people with this disease uh. so uh you cannot be sure that uh those people are actually getting ischemic heart disease earlier because of our diagnostic uh, advances uh. is that true yep. oh okay so uh, we also talked about medication earlier, right? So uh, I have like people telling me sometimes when they get heart diseases, right? They will say that once I start this medication, it means that I have to eat it until I die. Is that true or is it a myth? Yeah, certainly, I think if you have ischemic heart disease, there are two medicines which uh, will be unfortunately will need to be taken for life. Uh, number one is anti platelet agent. Most of the time is aspirin. Unless you cannot tolerate aspirin, then you might need another alternative, which, uh, such as profitogryl. So these are medicines which are proven to be effective to prevent uh, recurrence and to prevent worsening ischemic heart disease. So it has to be taken for life. So just now, the doctor also talked about the bypass surgery, right? And it's an open heart condition, I think. So you have to open the rib cage and everything to access the heart and stop the heart, right? So is that a very common practice for you or is it like quite rare as well? Yeah, certainly. Bypass surgery is a major surgery. It's done by cardiac surgeon, not done by cardiologists. Oh. So this does uh, angioplasty, angiogram, and probably pacemaker, but bypass surgery is done by cardiac surgeon, which has different training program altogether. And uh, because the heart is moving all the time, and to do a bypass surgery, uh, you need to stop the heart and then uh, stitch the artery, uh, the bypass graft into the moving heart. So you stop it. But when you stop the heart, the circulation to, to the rest of the body has to be maintained. So there is a, a bypass machine as an artificial heart. The surgery takes about three to four hours. Alternatively, there are certain ways of stabilizing the artery uh, during surgery where you need not have to put the patient on the bypass machine, meaning that uh, do the bypass operation on the beating heart. You only stabilize the artery where you want to stitch. Uh, technically, can some surgeon is doing it quite successfully, and uh, and there are certain limitations. Uh, beating heart surgery tend to do less graft uh, because uh, only certain portion you can stabilize the artery. So bypass surgery most of the time need to go for a machine bypass, uh, stop the heart, do the operation. Heart surgery can be done. That's very interesting. Okay, uh, so doctor, do you have anything that you want to tell our audience? Like any advice before we end this uh interview session? I think since the audience are all many medical students, I suppose. So I think if you look at uh, coronary artery disease, uh, if you are year one, year two medical students now, uh, whatever I tell you might be obsolete by the time you are practicing medicine. Because cardiovascular disease uh, is advancing very extremely fast. I think 10 years ago, the treatment is probably different. I'm sure 10 years from now, the treatment will be uh, different. I think there are many fields which are developing. For example, uh, doing, uh, they are also more and more advancing, advanced mortality which help angioplasty and there are also surgeons who do mini thoracotomy rather than opening the whole chest up but do a small little hole and do bypass and uh, these are modality which have been explored so but it is an exciting field and certainly if you are interested certainly uh, i'm sure for those who doesn't want to do surgery. Uh, cardiology certainly will be a good field to be in. If you still want to hands on, want to be yeah, interested in medicine, but not surgery, then uh, cardiology will be a good thing. But you need to continue up to date. It's a changing field. 
Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right, so our fellow audience and of course the medical students or pre-medical students, please do take up Dr. Lee's advice. I think that's golden advice because you definitely won't get that from anywhere else than over here, all right? So as for those uh, other people who actually are watching this, uh, please do also start living healthily and not smoke because that is one of the main factors that actually cause this disease. All right, so right now, I would like to express my utmost gratitude to Dr. Lee Hun Chai for taking our time to attend this very interview. I hope that we will get acquainted again in the future. Thank you, Dr. Bye-bye. Bye. Yes. Yeah.